Uh, let's begin. Uh, thank you, everybody, for attending this data engineering session of the DataCon LA 2021 conference. We welcome you all here. Our, I'm, uh, I'm your host, Ron Lee, and our co-host is Lee Middleton. Wave, Lee. Uh, we will be uh, moderating the chat and the Q&A for this session. So if you have any questions, please place them in the Q&A tab on your screen. And uh, the speaker will be, will get to the uh, questions at the end of the session. Uh, our speaker today is Jacob Schultz. And uh, well, actually, you can you will do your own introduction, right, Jacob? I think that was yes. the good. So, yes. without further ado, here's Jacob. Thanks, and uh, welcome everyone to my talk about uh, uh, building your own social media analytics with uh, Apache Kafka. Uh, my name is uh, Jakub Scholz, as was already said, and I work uh, as engineer at Red Hat. Uh, and I'm also maintainer of the project called Streamzy, which is Cloud Native Computing Foundation project focusing on uh, running Apache Kafka on Kubernetes. And uh, I'm also uh, occasionally contributor to Apache Kafka itself. So that's kind of the background from which I'm coming to this uh, to this talk. And uh, I hope that uh, everyone knows Apache Kafka and heard about it at least something. Uh, what's important and what's uh, one of the things I want to kind of show in this talk is that uh, Apache Kafka is way more than uh, just a messaging broker uh, and uh, that it's amazing ecosystem of different components and tools and uh, it's also uh, something what we can call event streaming platform and uh, yeah, let's look a bit more into detail what both of these mean. Uh, for, the, for the ecosystem, Apache Kafka itself has several different uh, components. Uh, there's, of course, the, the brokers themselves, uh, which are almost always used. But then there's uh, something called Kafka Connect API, which uh, is used for integration with different systems to kind of get the messages uh, or data from other systems into Kafka or get them from Kafka into some other system. There's also Mirror Maker, uh, which has actually two versions these days, one and two, which is used to mirror data between different Kafka clusters. They are the Java clients for producing and consuming the messages. Uh, there's also something called Streams API, which can be used for streams processing. And then there are many other components and tools which actually live outside the Apache Kafka project. And uh, that's, for example, schema registries uh, for uh, managing the schemas of the data which you are working with. There are, of course, clients for uh, other languages than Java, uh, C++, Python, Golang, uh, pretty much anything uh, you might imagine. Uh, there are, for example, operators for Kubernetes like Streamzy to make it easy to run Apache Kafka. There's integration with many different uh, AI or machine learning tools. There are different UIs and, uh, and uh, many other kind of tools. And what we have on the other side is the Connect API, which is used for integration, that's actually really just a framework which works with uh, pluggable connectors. And the connectors, really 99% of them are always third party, so they live outside of the Kafka project. But there are hundreds of them, and you can really use them to integrate with most different products, projects, API, services, and uh, to name some of them, uh, I will be actually using in this talk and in the demos, the Apache Camel connectors, uh, but there are many other connectors as well. Just to mention one, for example, the Debezium for change data capture uh, and many others. So it's really a rich and vibrant ecosystem of different tools, which very nicely work together. 
and I hope that after this uh, talk and after seeing the demos, uh, I will be able to kind of demonstrate it uh, quite nicely. Uh, next thing which I mentioned was the event streaming platform. Now that sounds like an uh, amazing uh, term full of nice buzzwords. Uh, uh, so what stands behind it? And I'm sure that if you Google it up, there will be many different definitions. One which I like is that to call yourself even streaming platform, there should be several different features and things you should be able to do. Uh, it needs to be able to import the data. Uh, it needs to be able to store the data and distribute them for further processing or operations. Uh, it needs to be able to process the data. And finally, uh, it needs to be able to export the data to move them to some other system again. And uh, Kafka fits this uh, perfectly. Uh, we have the Connect API, which takes care of the integration. So that's the importing and exporting of, uh, of the events into Kafka or from Kafka. We have the brokers, which uh, take care of storing uh, the data, but also of distributing them for the processing and to the clients. And we have the Streams API and uh, basically also the consumers uh, and producers for uh, processing uh, the data. So uh, it kind of fits very nicely into this even streaming platform concept. Uh, now, what I will really focus in this talk and in the demos is uh, I will use Twitter and its APIs. And I will use the Kafka Connect and uh, uh, different connectors to load the data from Twitter into my uh, Kafka brokers. And then I will be always using the Streams API to kind of do the processing, do some analysis and try to find out something about the data. Uh, and uh, yeah, just because that's in these days, uh, but also because I work on the Streams project, which really focuses on this, I will, of course, run all of this on uh, top of Kubernetes. But uh, it would be quite easy to, for example, run this just on VMs and so on. There's not that uh, much special. It's just a bit easier for me um, on Kubernetes. Uh, the Twitter API, which I will be using, it's really API like any other, right? We have probably all seen many. APIs like that. It allows you to read your timeline, to read your tweets, your retweets, but you can also work with direct messages or you can search for different keywords. And uh, what's important, what I wanted to mention is that there's a free version of the API available, which has some rate limits, but you can totally use it uh, for things uh, like I will be showing in the demos because yeah, I'm using the free version as well in the demos. Uh, so next, the Kafka Connect, I already talked a lot about it. Uh, it uh, distinguishes the source and sync connectors. The source connectors, that's what uh, uh, is used uh, when you are importing the data, when you are getting them from somewhere outside into Kafka. And the sync connectors, that's what you use when you are getting the data somewhere outside of Kafka. And uh, yeah, there are really many, many connectors, but basically all of them live outside of the Apache Kafka project itself. But they are often created by the companies or projects uh, which run some services or some, some products and so on. So they are very often high quality. And in this demo, I will be actually using the connectors from the Apache Camel project. Uh, that's probably another Apache project which many people already heard about. It's uh, quite famous for its integration capabilities, and it has several hundreds of different integrations. So basically support for several hundred different uh, uh, systems uh, where we can uh, get the data from or push the data to. And uh, there are several ways how you can use Apache Camo, but one of them is that you can use it as a connectors uh, running inside Kafka Connect API. And uh, I, in particular, will use the Twitter connectors for the timeline, for search, and direct messages. Uh, and the last thing of the puzzle is the Streams API. 
uh, which I think a lot of people don't know about it, but I think it's uh, kind of a hidden gem in the Apache Kafka project. Uh, uh, it's really just a jar file or just a library which you can include in your application. It's not really a complicated framework which would have some controllers and workers and schedule uh, the processing uh, somewhere on the workers. Uh, you can really just include it into any framework, any application you have, uh, as long as it's in Java, of course, or as, as long as it's running on JVM. But it, despite this, it has really a lot of functionality. You can do all kinds of stateless operations like transformations, filtering. Uh, you can also do uh, stateful operations. Uh, so uh, uh, things like aggregations, grouping, you can do joins, you can do windowing. Uh, and of course, the whole thing can run in a scalable way so that it doesn't run just in a single instance. Now, let's get to something a bit more practical and let's uh, start with the demos. What I will do in the first demo is uh, I will use the timeline connector to connect to my Twitter timeline. So that's kind of the, the place in Twitter where when you are subscribed and you are following some, some other users, their tweets will be showing up. Uh, so that's what I will read with the, with the timeline uh, connector. And then I will use the Kafka Streams API to analyze uh, what's inside these tweets, what they are about, to kind of try to find out what are the interests, uh, what I'm following, and so on. And uh, really, it's kind of a basic example, which basically counts the words which are showing up in the tweets or the hashtags or the or the uh, uh, mentions and so on. So that's what we can use to find out uh, uh, what the timeline is about. So let's get to the command line. So I won't really describe in detail how, how Streamsy works uh, to run Kafka on Kubernetes, but basically what you do is you deploy the operator, which is really just a simple, uh, simple uh, application which runs on top of Kubernetes. And then you create these uh, these files, uh, which, for example, to create the Kafka cluster, you create this resource with kind Kafka, and inside you basically describe all you want to know, all you want to have in the Kafka setup, like how many nodes should it have, how many resources it should have, what should be the the listeners, uh, uh, how should they be secured, the authentication, authorization. Uh, you can just basically by few lines of YAML, you can tell the operator that you want to use Prometheus metrics. And uh, all of this is described like this. And then you just do kubectl apply and uh, the operator will deploy the whole cluster. And to deploy the Kafka Connect uh, framework, which runs in its own, uh, own processes, you can basically do the same. You just create a user to connect to the brokers. You specify all the different ACL rights to get it connected and allow it to read. Now, uh, to connect to Twitter, you would, of course, need to specify all the secrets and API keys, which is commented out here because yeah, the real ones, they are already created in the cluster. And then you just create, again, the connect cluster. So everything can be done in, uh, in YAML. And uh, then you just, with one command, create it, and it takes a few minutes, and the operator deploys the cluster and takes care of it. So uh, I have it already deployed here. Uh, so you can see the Kafka brokers, it's still using Zookeeper, so the Zookeeper is there and uh, the connect cluster is here as well. And then when I would want to create the, the connector, uh, I again use the Kafka connector resource and here I specify, okay, uh, use the Twitter timeline source connector. Remember that source because we are uh, reading the messages uh, from uh, Twitter and writing them into the Kafka cluster. I specify the secrets uh, with this home key. I tell it that I want to use the uh, use the timeline, and then I just tell it to use it as a JSON, and that's all you need to get it deployed. I, again, already prepared it to save some time because yeah, otherwise it would be for a few minutes looking here at the, at the screen, which would be loading uh, uh, 
uh, loading uh, the downloading the pods and creating them and so on. Uh, so that's already running. And now let's have a look at the uh, Kafka Streams application. So it always starts by building a topology. Uh, and you use for that this Streams Builder object where you always say something like, OK, let's start from a topic which uh, uh, contains the tweets which we want to analyze. And then I can specify uh, basically the format of the messages which I'm expecting. So for example, the, the Kafka messages, they have always a key and a, and a payload. And I don't really care about the key here. So I just keep it as a byte array. But I specify this uh, tweet server here. So I have some classes prepared. And uh, the Kafka Streams API will basically automatically decode the JSON into the Java classes. And then once I have the, the first stream, I can start working with it. So for example, here in this flat map values, that's kind of a transformation where uh, I can take one of the input messages and I can transform it into zero or many uh, output messages. And for example, here I just see, OK, uh, this is actually a retweet. Uh, so someone just pressed the retweet button. And uh, let's just get the text of the original tweet. Uh, if it's a quoted uh, status, uh, that means that someone pressed the retweet button but added some custom comment. Then we, for example, use both the original text as well as the new text. And if it's a regular tweet, we just take the regular text. And then I split it by uh, white spaces. So I split it into the individual words. And then I do kind of filtering so I don't care about anything what's less than three, uh, less than four characters. I have a list of ignored words with kind of generic words like about, then, that, this, and so on, which are almost everywhere, but we don't really care about them. And I also exclude here uh, any URLs. And then what I will really do is I will just do grouping. So I, I group this by the word, and then I count these words and store them both in the Kafka cluster but also locally. Uh, so if the application, for example, restarts, it's always able to recover the state from the Kafka brokers because everything is stored there. But it has also its local cache. And that's what I'm using uh, in this application to basically get the results of this processing. And what I'm doing here as well is I have here this, uh, this windowed by, which does the same counting as the, as the previous part. But it's using the windowing. And uh, uh, to understand what the windowing is, like the, the first part, it's really counting all the tweets it saw. It's counting the words for all of them. So I have it running here for several weeks, and it's counting the weeks of tweets and the words. Whereas with the windowing, UK, for example, you can, for example, say that you are interested just uh, in. Uh, the the messages the tweets for the last hour or maybe last day and so on and you just specify okay i want to do this window and i'm interested in window of the size one hour and i want to move it also always by one minute and it will be automatically also calculating the results for these windows and we can then query these as well so i can for example also see what are the most common words in my twitter timeline for the last one hour and uh, what I have else here is, uh, so I'm running this in a framework called Quarkus, which tries to make uh, Java uh, cloud friendly, cloud native. Uh, and what I have here, what's using the Quarkus framework part is I have a very simple REST API, which you can basically use to get the top 10, top 20, top 50 words depending on how, how often they they show up in the timeline. And uh, what this REST API does is uh, it basically talks with the Streams API application, and it gets the data from the Streams API application and sends them out in the, in the REST API. And uh, when I get back to the browser, you can have a look at the result where you then I show it here in the web application kind of as a word cloud where you see the the things which show up most there like this villa and AVFC that's the soccer team I support 
there's a lot of messages about cloud on my timeline, but you can see that there's also a lot of kind of regular words, not that interesting into help here and so on. And I can also show the show the latest words and that's kind of, yeah, I probably don't have the timeline that busy. So that's showing some, yeah, some weird things because there were not that many tweets. Uh, if you really play with this, what's also interesting is you can really just take the take the tags and the mentions because that kind of eliminates all these generic words which are not that interesting. And uh, if it loads, but it doesn't seem to load, that shows you uh, uh, really the tags uh, and what your tweets are about that's a bit more uh, corresponding. So that was the first demo. Uh, and uh, let's move to something a bit more interesting. Uh, and uh, for that, I will be using uh, Connector, which is searching for tweets containing some special keywords. And then uh, I will use uh, basically machine learning to analyze the sentiment of these tweets, whether they are positive or negative. And then uh, uh, what's fairly common, so in the previous demo, I used the web UI and the REST API to show the results in the browser. But what's very common as well is that you don't really have any UI itself. You just read data from some topic, do some processing, and then dump the data into another topic where someone else picks them up. And what I will do here is the, the first connector will search the Twitter, time, uh, Twitter uh, tweets, all the tweets, not just my timeline, for a keyboard. And when it uh, finds it, it sends it to the streams uh, API application, which will use the sentiment analysis uh, to decide whether it's positive or negative. And if it's positive and negative, it will send it into another topic, which we will use as alerts. Uh, and uh, then from this alert topic, it will be picked up by a sync connector which will take this message and send it to me as a, as a kind of alert, uh, uh, as a direct message. Uh, and you can imagine it being useful, for example, if you work on some project or product or a company, you can set it up like this. It can watch all the tweets. And when it finds something positive or negative about it, then uh, it notifies you. And you can, for example, go uh, to the tweet. And if it's negative, maybe you can find out what's the problem and help or if it's positive, you can thank for nice tweet or or things like that. So, uh, so that's what we will do here. Uh, if you want to join, then uh, you can actually join uh, for this demo. If you send a tweet with a tag uh, with the hashtag uh, byosma, then uh, it will be then picked up by the by the tool doing the analysis, and it should show up uh, in my application in my demo. It's uh, the, the hashtag might seem weird, but it's like bring your own social media analytics. So uh, B-Y-O-S-M-A. And uh, I have two home clusters running here. So I will just quickly jump uh, the other one, which I will use for this demo. And uh, I still have the Kafka cluster deployed here. It's just uh, another cluster. And what I will do now is uh, I will now deploy the, the search plugin, which uh, the search connector, which is using the Twitter search source connector. And here you can see in the keywords, the, the hashtag uh, we will be using. So let's just do cube cuddle apply f search. And I will use the second connector. So now you can notice that this is a sync connector. That's a Twitter direct message sync connector. And uh, that will read the, the messages from the Twitter alerts topic. And it will send it as a direct message to this user uh, 7246595. That's kind of my demo Twitter user, which I use for the demos and so on to avoid showing some private direct messages and so on. Uh, but this is really the Twitter handle uh, of the user where you want to send uh, the direct messages to. So I do again cube cuddle fly dash f. And finally, 
I need to deploy the application doing the sentiment analysis so I can create the user and then I just deploy the application in a container. So cube cuddle apply for the for the last time. And uh, when I do kubectl get Kafka connector, I can see the connectors I just created and I can see that they are ready. So they should be working. That's great. Uh, let's before we get to tweeting something, let's get uh, to the code and let's have a look uh, at how it looks like. So what I'm using here is this uh, deep Java learning uh, Java library, uh, which I'm using to for the sentiment analysis. I think that's open source project, uh, which I think originated at AWS. Uh, uh, so in Amazon, uh, and again, I'm running this inside the Quarkus framework, but uh, there's no REST UI or anything. What I do in the in the topology is uh, that again, I build the stream from from the source topic where I get the tweets from the search, and then I filter them. And in this case, what I do is uh, uh, if it's uh, uh, retweet. I don't care about it. I really cared about the first time it was tweeted, but I don't want to get alerts for the same thing again and again, right? So I will just ignore it. But if it's a regular tweet, then I basically get the message. And uh, I use the deep Java learning library to give me the classification of this. So it's really using some pre-trained models in this demo. Uh, so that I don't need to do some complicated training. And basically, if the classification has probability more than 90%, then I create this new message, which basically has the URL for the tweet. And it has this message, the following tweet was classified as positive or negative, and what was the probability. And then at the end, I just with this peak method, I really just log it into the log. But the important thing with this two method at the end, I send it to the alerts topic where the direct message connector will pick it up. So let's have a look. Uh, let's switch to my to my Twitter and let's tweet something nice. So uh, DataCon LA is an amazing conference with many interesting talks. Really enjoyed the keynote. So let's see if this will be positive or negative. It's not negative, right? But let's see if it will be positive enough. Let's add the uh, the hashtag. So bring your own social media analytics, and let's tweet it. And when I get to the command line, what I can do, I can grab the lock from the from the pot which is uh, which is doing the heavy lifting, and I can already see that there's the there's the some tweet which had the probability of 99 or 98 uh, percent that it was positive. So when I switch back here and go to the messages, I can actually see that uh, here it is. Actually, let's zoom it. Data Conale is an amazing conference, uh, and so on. So that's what I wrote. And it tells me, okay, the following tweet is classified as positive. So yeah, now I can go and talk to these guys what he liked, and I can like it and retweet it and so on. So that's the sentiment analysis. Now, so far in both of the demos, what I was really doing is I have all, had always everything prepared, right? I didn't show the whole cycle to save some time, but uh, I upfront I built the container images, I prepared the YAML files, and uh, and that's great if you want to run something like this sentiment analysis and you want to run it for several months, alerting you about tweets about your product or project or company. Uh, that then it's worth to take the time and. Uh, do all these things. But uh, sometimes you maybe have just some experiment or some idea or hypothesis which you want to confirm uh, on uh, on some tweets. And uh, then kind of yeah, building the Docker image and so on, that's 
waste of time, right? Some YAMLs. Let's run it directly here locally. Uh, and as an example, uh, a colleague of mine, uh, uh, Gunnar, who actually works on the Debezium connector, which you should check out uh, because that's one of the great connector examples. He always says that uh, when you tweet something and you attach a picture or something like that, some media, then it will get, will get a lot more attention, more retweets, more likes than if it's just a plain text. So let's see if we can confirm this idea with the power of Apache Kafka and uh, the Kafka Streams API. And what I have here is this simple streams application again. I have again the streams builder and I again build the stream by reading the source topic. And this time what I will do is I will filter it because yeah, if I count the retweets into the statistics, then uh, yeah, I might get them multiple times and that would kind of not show up that well. Uh, that would kind of screw up the, the numbers. So I exclude them. But then I group everything and I use this aggregate method of the of the streams API. Uh, and when I look inside what this aggregation class is doing, it really basically is called for every tweet which we receive. And it checks whether there are any, uh, any and actually this shouldn't be hashtag entities. This should be, what should it be, media entities. So it looks like I had some bug here. And I hope that the demo will work uh, because obviously that's just something I changed. And then if it has some media, then uh, I will basically call this method to do the counting, uh, count the average number of retweets. And if it doesn't have any media, then I call the other method to do the average counting. And uh, uh, so that way I basically count how many tweets I have seen with some media and without, and what's the average number of retweets. And then what I will do here, uh, I use the peak method here to basically lock into the standard output what was the cal calculation result. And uh, uh, I'm not sending it into any other Kafka topic because yeah, I don't really care about the end results. I just want to run it once, see the result, and uh, uh, and that's it, right? I don't want to further work with it. So so that's why I don't finish it with sending it to some stream. And uh, so let's stop this stop this lock, and let's go into the ad hoc application. And so this Quarkus framework, which I used for this demo, it has this Maven plugin with which I can uh, easily run the project and uh, it even has the things like life reload and you change the code or something but I won't show this so that's now starting it compiles the project then it connects to the Kafka cluster it creates some support topics for the aggregations and now it should start uh, counting the, the tweets so if I check my uh, Grafana monitoring. This is the topic which I'm I'm using. So in the timeline, I have right now over three thousand tweets. So and let's have a look. So yeah, if I exclude the retweets, it probably processed all of them. So it was one thousand four hundred tweets with some media, one thousand one hundred without any media, and the result is that the average retweets with media is two point eight retweets per status. And without media, it's 0 0.8 retweets per status. What does that mean? That Gunnar was right and uh, using the picture uh, should actually help uh, with uh, the, with uh, getting more retweets and getting more likes. So uh, yeah, idea confirmed. Now, uh, we are slowly going to the end, but here are just some other ideas which maybe if you, if I got you interested, you can take them and uh, then try them later on your own. You can uh, see if there's the right time to uh, to write the tweets uh, 
to get more attention. You can see what applications or from which locations are people in your timeline tweeting. Uh, you can try to write some bots which will react to messages. Uh, but you can, of course, also try other, other, other social media. You can try Facebook, LinkedIn, and so on. Uh, almost everyone has API these days, and there's so many connectors uh, out there that you will definitely find one for, for them as well. And uh, so these are just the links uh, for uh, the applications which I used or the, the frameworks and libraries and tools which I used during this talk. And uh, that's, uh, that's really it. I hope uh, this showed how the Kafka ecosystem works well together and how it has all the different uh, options and possibilities. And if you are interested in the in the slides or in the in the files for the demos to run it yourself, then if you go to this URL, uh, which is listed here, that's the GitHub repo, or it redirects you to the GitHub repo, uh, which uh, has the source codes and the YAMLs and uh, link to the slides as well. So that's it. And uh, yeah, I guess if there are any questions, we should have a few minutes for them as well. Thank you very much, yeah, Jacob. Um, if there are any questions, please enter them into the Q&A window. If not, we can end this session a little bit early. We only have four more minutes. That was a fascinating demo. Uh, that was very enjoyable. And I'm looking forward to grabbing the links from the uh, from the slide share because I didn't have time to make any copies or uh, take any pictures. But thank you very much. Um, thank you for all the attendees. There will be plenty more uh, left today and tomorrow, both in data engineering and all the other tracks for the Datacom LA conference 2021. Uh, if you have any questions regarding this topic, you can contact the speaker directly. and. If there are no questions, everybody have a good day. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.